Also in Christ bless you all. <clears throat> Welcome to today's Daily Bread. It's me, Bishop Kanai, with Soldier Kanai. Uh, today we're going to go over um, <clears throat> the writings of Ezra. Uh, I was reading the other day, and I thought it was very interesting, so I want to just uh, spend some time reading in it today, and um, hopefully uh, Mosai show us something wonderful. Uh, but let's begin by setting up the prayers. Let's all rise and face Jerusalem. And of Israel, blow trumpets. <laughs> Blessed be the God of Israel. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to wake up this another day. Have mercy upon us, Father. Forgive us of our sins. We ask, O oh, Heavenly Father, that you bless this nation, Father, that you use for tools of righteousness. We know, Heavenly Father, that it's by you and through you all things are possible, and by thy Son's blood we're redeemed. So we come before thee in prayer and petition, Father. Ask that you hear us, Father. That you put our enemies underfoot, Father. That you first fill us with thy laws, statutes, and commandments, that we might walk worthy of this vocation in which we are called. We pray that you send more labors into this harvest, Father, that in all things we do, we bring glory to thee. We ask and we pray for the lives of our brothers on the island of Hispaniola, the Levites, what they're going through right now, Father, that you put the spirit upon the brothers that's there to edify the people and that they might make a change to come back to thy laws, Father, that we one day can rule on this earth again. Those sisters that are amongst us that are with child, Father, strengthen their wombs. Those of us that have gone through mental anguish, Father, restore to them the joy of our salvation. Those that are weary in spirit, Father, strengthen them. We ask all these things in Christ's name, and we thank you, Father. We ask today, Father, that you increase us mightily in thy word, Father. Teach us wonderful things out of our law, Father, that we might navigate and be found as faithful servants. We thank you, Father, in Christ, and we pray. Amen. Amen. So yeah, uh, hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, most high Christ bless. Uh, real quick, wanted to make a mention uh, concerning the success of uh, the essence. I heard your brothers had a good time out there. I heard uh, the word went out. Uh, brothers went out to New Orleans for the Essence Festival, which is a which is a big event. Uh, in New Orleans, and um, a hundred plus men out there, and the most side brought the word. It was uh, all praises, beautiful, beautiful, and definitely played. We got some brothers in Haiti right now that are, are stranded there, 
because of what's going on. When you all get a chance, check the news out. Uh, people are, are rioting uh, throughout the streets because of the gas prices being raised. After a while, you know, surely oppression makes a wise man mad. Um, you can't keep on, you know, affecting the people or, you know, oppressing them without them not revolting. But it's our job now to go out there and uh, show them the right way to revolt. Um, and keeping the commandments is revolutionary. All right? So um, I was reading, <clears throat> I forgot what class I was teaching. Sometimes I get, I forget if it's daily bread or the Sabbath service. But um, we were reading um, in Ezra, second Ezra. And uh, I, I just decided I want to read today and I want to actually read second Ezra. Uh, and hopefully as we read, you know, to reveal some things in there to try to help paint the picture. Uh, first off, who was Ezra? Uh, Ezra was one of the prophets of the tribe of Levi, uh, doing <clears throat> doing the mm, middle to latter end of the Babylonians, uh, uh, moving into the Persian uh, captivity. And uh, you're going to find something very similar in uh, many of the prophets that and he kept on telling them, man, get the people right. Tell the people to get right. Even in captivity, we were not listening. All right, so let's let's read um, Second Ezra, can I? Um, Second Ezra, the first chapter. Oh, you know what? Let's read Second Ezra first. Give me one second. I want to Second Ezra three and one. Then I want to go to Ezra in the Bible to try to put it in its <clears throat> in some kind of. Um, some type of order as far as the timeline. So read 2 Ezra 3 and 1, and then you're going to read Ezra 1, verse 1. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 3 and verse 1. In the 30th year after the ruin of the city... That I, city is Jerusalem. Read on. I was in Babylon and laid troubled upon my bed, and my thoughts came up over my heart. Okay, so we established that it was... A, it was the thirtieth year after ruin of Babel, uh, after ruin of Jerusalem, that Ezra had this vision. Hold this. Let's go to Ezra. In the Bible, one and one. The book of Ezra in the Bible, chapter one and verse one. Now, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, at the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing saying okay so we we can safely say that Ezra was uh throughout the middle he began to prophesy throughout the that we first read about throughout the middle of <clears throat> the Babylonian captivity the 30th year remember the um the Babylonians captivity was for how many years brothers you remember say it louder 70 years, I think it's Jeremiah 20-something or 25 or something like that. I forgot exactly where it's at. But anyway, the point was, so he began to prophesy about midway through the Babylonians into the Persian and Medes, all right? So um, uh, watch this. That being that said, hold Ezra in the Apocrypha, let go Ezra in the Bible. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel real quick, and then I'll, I'll try to begin. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 1 the book of Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 1 now it came to pass in the 30th year in the 4th month and the 5th day of the month as I was among the captives by the river of Chabar that the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. So we can safely say that Ezekiel the prophet and Ezra the prophet were prophesying in the same time period. All right? Uh, I tell you, a, a lot of times in reading, and um, I, I don't think you can hear it enough when the Bible said, study to show thyself approved, even when you're reading and you think you're not really ingesting anything, you are. You just have to keep on reading. So now what you should do on your time is read Ezra and Ezekiel. Read those two books, and you'll see a lot of stuff they talk about. And I haven't done it right now, but if I take a second, a lot of stuff they're going to talk about is very similar. 
Like today, I keep on saying, if you're prophesying here in Austin and brothers are prophesying in, on the streets in Dallas or wherever you are, you're all going to be talking about the same thing. You're going to be saying the same thing. What's the big issue today? Women wearing pants. Everybody's going to talk about it. You know, eating unclean foods, whatever it might be. All right? So we identified that Ezra and Ezekiel, and then later on you're going to see some other prophets that, were, uh, that came a little bit after them uh, and what they were talking about. I don't think we're going to get to that point today. Okay, so here we go. So we know that we're in captivity under Babylon about midway point. Now look what he says. This has nothing to do with Ezra, but I just want to read this. Jump to chapter 2. Start with verse 1 of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 1. And he said unto me, son of man, stand upon thy feet and I will speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me, and set me upon my feet that I heard him that spake unto me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to this children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me even unto this very day. For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, through briars and thorns be with thee. And though dost dwell among scorpions, be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. So what strikes me about that scripture is that uh, Jerusalem was laid siege, was laid waste from the siege uh, approximately 30 years prior. And then we've been in captivity for 30 years and we still can't get it right. The Most High still has to send prophets while we're in captivity. We so disconnected at this point, we're still singing against God. We still will not, and the Lord said, this is a rebellious people, man. That, these people, I just got to kill them because they're not, they're not listening. You would think after getting jacked up, you kind of be a little circumspect and say, let me get myself together. God said, not these people. Not these people. Lord. These people will not change. Okay. That just always struck me when I read that. I always read about the prophets and like Daniel, many of them, and um, in our captivities, we were just, um, uh, we were wicked. We didn't want to change. Okay, let's drop that. Uh, we're going to go back to Ezra. Ezra. Second Ezra. Um, I want to begin, but there's one point I want to make before I begin. Just bear with me. Cap, look up the word riches in second Ezra. Or rich. Just give me one second, everybody. Uh, it's close. I'm close to it. I don't want to move forward. Just bear with me. I'm right here on top of it. Oh, hold on. Before bear. Passage. Uh, tell me if you're fine. Let's go ahead and start reading. It's it's in the early books. Yeah, second answers. Go ahead, start with one-on-one. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 1 and verse 1. The second book of the prophet Ezra, the son of Sarias, the son of Azarias, the son of Helicas, the son of Sadamias, the son of Sadak, the son of Ikatab, the son of Achaias, the son of Phinees, the son of Heli, the son of Amorus, the son of Azai, the son of Merimoth, the son of Arna, the son of Ozias, the son of Borith, the son of Abasai. The son of Phinees, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron of the tribe of Levi, which was captive in the land of the Medes, in the reign of Artaxerxes, king of Persians. Okay, so we we, we know that Ezra was a, was a Levi. He came out of the line of Eleazar, all right. The son of Aaron of the tribe of Levi, which was captive in the land of the Medes, uh. In the reign of Artaxerxes, king of the Persians. So we know by this time uh, he's talking about them being under the Persian rule. We read that also in Ezra in the Bible, one and one. 
during the time of Cyrus the Persian. So when you read in the scriptures, you had uh, Babylon fall to the, um, to the uh, medial Persian Empire under the hand of Darius. And then after Darius, right behind him came Cyrus. And after Cyrus, don't remember his name. I forgot who it was. It could have been Xerxes. I forgot who it was. It might have been another Darius. But the point being, those two empires came together, and he was prophesying or was walking during the time of Artaxerxes. Now, you know the name Artaxerxes because you're going to read about him also. Known, his name was also known as Ahasuerus. Don't quote me on that one. I don't know if this was, I got to read on, I'm not sure if this was the first Artaxerxes. Just in a second, I, I'll remember. But Ahasuerus is the one you read about in the time of Mordecai and Esther. So let's read on. You didn't find it? Okay, maybe I'm, let me just read. We're going to hit it as we read. read verse, on. verse 4. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Go thy way. And shew my people their sinful deeds and their children their wickedness. So, so remember what we just reading back in uh, in uh, Ezekiel. He told Ezekiel, "Go to the people, go to the children of the captivity, and rebuke them." And what is he telling Ezra? Go and show the people their sinful ways. That's why I told you the Bible keeps on saying the same thing over and over again. So we know on the thirtieth in the thirtieth year that the God sent out. Ezekiel to warn the people to repent, and in the thirtieth year he sent out Ezra to warn the people to repent. Read on. Go thy way and shew my people their sinful deeds and their children their wickedness which they have done against me, that they may tell their children's children, because the sins of their fathers are increased in them, for they have forgotten me and have offered unto strange gods. Three, three, and what? Three and two. Uh, now, there we are. One second. Uh, okay, let's read on. We'll just, because it's too late now. We'll read it as we get to it. Starting verse seven, <laughs> or verse six. Because the sins of their fathers are increased in them, for they have forgotten me and have offered unto strange gods. It says, this, he says, because the sins of their father are increased in them, for they have forgotten me and have offered unto strange gods. This is actually now in Babylon. In Babylon, this, we have become, give me that in Jeremiah 16, because Jeremiah said it too. Jeremiah 16, verse 12. 16 and 12. <clears throat> the book of Jeremiah, chapter 16 and verse 12. And ye have done worse. Start, start with verse 11. Verse 11. Start with verse 10. Verse 10. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt shew this people all these words, and they shall say unto thee, Wherefore hath the Lord pronounced all this great evil against us? This great evil that came was coming against us in the time of Jeremiah was the Babylonians. Why? They said, they're going to say, Why is this happening? Read on. Or what is our iniquity? Or what is our sin that we have committed against the Lord our God? Then shalt thou say unto them, Because your fathers have forsaken me, saith the Lord, and have walked after other gods. Is that the same thing it's saying over here in, in Ezra? That we walked after other gods? Now remember, Jeremiah would have been the predecessor to Ezra and Ezekiel. He was telling them, because remember, uh, Jeremiah never went to Babylon. He was carried by, um, if I'm correct, Nebuchadnezzar Dan, the captain of, of, of Nebuchadnezzar's host, but then he was he was freed on his way there and they let him go back. But the point was, what were we doing in Babylon? I mean, in uh, in um, Jerusalem, worshiping other gods. And he was and he was saying, you're doing worse than your fathers. And then when we got to Babylon, what were we doing? Worshiping other gods. So what do you think people were doing when you read Bell and the Dragon with Daniel? They was worshiping that. They was worshiping Bell and the Dragon, not Daniel, but they were worshiping the gods, Marduk, the gods of the Babylonians. And then we went to Persia, and we worshiped the Persian gods. We, it's the same consistent behavior that we have. Read on. And have served them, and have worshiped them, and have forsaken me, and not kept after my law. What verse you at? Verse 12. Read. And ye have done worse than your fathers. It says, and you have done worse 
than your fathers, and you have done worse than your fathers. Read on. For behold, ye walk every one after the imagination of his evil heart, that they may not hearken unto me. When it says, you have done worse than your fathers, stay right there with me. Mm. One second. Uh, let that go, whole second Ezra. Uh, let's read. Uh, second, uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter. Chapter 4, verse 12. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, and verse 12. For the bewitching of naughtiness just obscure things that are honest. The scripture says what? The bewitching of naughtiness doth obscure things that are honest. The bewitching of naughtiness, the bewitching of sin does obscure the things that are honest. So what happened? These people worship these other gods, they become they became bewitched and they became worse than their fathers. After a while, their, their sins was openly they wasn't hiding. They were openly worshiping these other gods. So the bewitching of naughtiness does obscure the things that are honest. Read on. And the wandering of concupiscence doth undermine the simple mind. And that's what happened. We became simple. It undermined us as a people. Let's go back to um, Second Ezra. Verse, uh, six. The book of Second Ezra, chapter one and verse six. Because the sins of their fathers are increased in them, for they have forgotten me and have offered unto strange gods. Am not I even he that brought them out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage? And they have provoked me unto wrath and despised my counsels. Pull thou off then the hair of thy head, and cast all evil upon them. For they have not been obedient unto my law, but it is a rebellious people. Read on. How long shall I forbear them unto whom I have done so much good? God said, how long am I supposed to forbear them? I'm trying to be patient with them, whom I've done so much good for. I've chosen them above all nations. I've destroyed kingdoms for them. I've freed them from the oppressor. By marvelous works, how long can I forbear these people? Read on. Many kings have I destroyed for their sakes. Pharaoh with his servants and all his power have I smitten down. All the nations have I destroyed before them. And in the east I have scattered people of two provinces, even of Tyrus, people of two provi even of Tyrus and Sidon, and have slain all their enemies. So when we was coming to the land, the Lord said, I destroyed the Tyre and Sidon. I destroyed them. They, they were in the land of Canaan. So I destroyed them for you. I gave you, the, I gave you their land. Read on. Speak thou therefore unto them, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I led you through the sea, and in the beginning gave you a large and safe passage. I gave you Moses for a leader and Aaron for a priest. I gave you light and a pillar of fire, and great wonders have I done among you. Yet have ye forgotten me, saith the Lord. The Lord said, I'm showing you all that. He's telling them, listen, tell them, this, look what all he has done for us. Read on. Thus saith the Almighty Lord, the quails were as a token for you. I gave you tents for your safeguard. Nevertheless, ye murmured there. So when we were in the wilderness, what he did, he fed us with quail. We was complaining about flesh. He gave us quail. He gave us tents. That's why we have the Feast of Tabernacles where we dealt uh, in, uh, in the wilderness and we were... For the most part, we kept on moving, migrating, and we had tents to give us covering while we were out there. Read on. And triumph, not in my name for the destruction of your enemies, but ever to this day do ye yet murmur. And you didn't triumph. You didn't thank the Lord for all the things you've done for you. That's why he said in Deuteronomy 28, uh, what's again, 47, where he says, Therefore thou shalt serve thy enemies, because you serve not the Lord with joyfulness and gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore, you're going to serve your enemies because he gave us all things. And we're like, ah, uh, I don't know. It wasn't all that big of a deal, man. Thank you. But I mean, I mean, good looking out. But, you know, look how they are, you know. L l look at them. Meanwhile, the enemies, they, they, they want to be us. We don't. 
Where are the benefits that I have done for you? When ye were hungry and thirsty in the wilderness, did not ye cry unto me, saying, Why hast thou brought us into this wilderness to kill us? It had been better for us to die, to, to have served the Egyptians, than to die in this wilderness. It shows you our unbelieving heart. So this is, this is <clears throat> Ezra uh, and the Lord dealing. God is dealing with Ezra. And old people thought it was better to die in Egypt serving oppressor. Uh, they thought it was better to stay in Egypt serving oppressor. Listen, the Most High did not send all those plagues on the Egyptians, part of the Red Sea, delivered us away from the hand of the enemy, not for us to die in the wilderness. The only minds that thought like that were those that were unbelieving. That really didn't, they, they loved their life in, um, in Egypt. And many of people stay on oppression right now. Ah, many of you right now in these churches just, you know, you just couldn't get enough for that 4th of July. It was beautiful, man. Look at the fireworks. We had barbecue sauces, 99 cents. Man, we was, we was having, a, you know, bears, Budweiser's. God bless America. <laughs> Listen to me. I was just, I was reading an article yesterday, a captain of a, a Northern Kingdom brother who was um, advocate for uh, Trump being uh, elected as president. And they deported him. Damn. <laughs> Took a nigga wake up call. Ding ding, wake up nigga. Listen, he was he had him on the news and everything, going hard for Trump. Trump's like, man, we trust in oppression. God said, all that I've done for you. Yeah, please, please go ahead. Shalom, Israel. Good morning. Let's get uh real quick. Jeremiah chapter five. <clears throat> Because it goes in perfectly with what the bishop just said about a lot of people are getting that Negro wake-up call. A lot of y'all think that America is your rest. That's the reason why it said in the book of Lamentation, we've watched for a nation that cannot save us. But yet you think you're going to find saviors here amongst the white man. The only saviors that you're going to find in America are Christ's servants, the Israelites. Those are the only ones. So it's not until we come back to the laws of God that you're actually going to find out how to be able to gain redemption because this is not your place of rest. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 5, start at verse 24, 23. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 23. But this people, having a revolting and a rebellious heart, they are revolted and gone. Re revolted against the, wo the words of God, revolted against the laws and instructions of God, mm -hmm. and they're gone into sin. They're gone into foolishness. They're gone unto idols. No different than how we are today in America. We hear God's words, we revolt against it, and then we go in the midst of sin. Read on. Neither say they in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God. You know what? They never say in their mind, why is all these things happening to us? Why did we go into slavery in the first place? Our people do not consider. <laughs> our people never say, well, you know what? We're getting a foot up our behind right now. No justice, no peace. Our kids are getting shot down every single day. Maybe God has something to say about this. And if so, let's go to the Bible and find out what he said. We don't think that in our mind, Read, Come on. That giveth rain, both the former and the latter. In other words, the Most High supplies us with what's needful for us. That's the same thing that we were reading about in the book of Ezra. When we lack, the Most High supplied. When we were in a drought, the Most High gave rain. These are things that are essential for our life. Because when you read in the scriptures in the Apocrypha, it says that the chief things of life is water, bread, clothing, and a house to cover shame. That's the reason why when the prophets speak, they speak in terms of those resources because those were the chief things that the Lord gave. Read. In his season, he reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. To make sure that we never went without. Read. Your iniquities have turned away these things. But the Most High said, because of your sins, I'm going to stop giving you those things. Because of the fact that you don't want to keep my laws, guess what? Now you're going to have the white man over you in hard bondage. Now you're going to have your enemies and your oppressors. The heathen's going to rule over you. Different time periods, different captivity. The oppressor might have been different, but the theme was the same. <laughs> you don't want to keep my laws? Okay, serve the heathen and see how you like it that way. Read. And your sins have withholden good things from you. Your sins have held you back from 
being the masters of the earth, being set on high above all nations of the earth. Read. From among my people are found wicked men. Among our people is found niggas. <laughs> the same people that would like to be in the land of the heathen and say we would rather die here. Their mind would not be on goodly things. They would say, I want to go back to the oppressor. I'd rather stay in America. I'd rather stay in Egypt. I'd rather stay in the land of my enemy. That's the reason why the scripture says, envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of other, their ways. We were comfortable in our oppressor's land. That's why it says, for among my people are found wicked men. Read. They lay wait as he that said it snares. They set a trap that catch men. Because... A lot of our forefathers, we love the idols of the world. We love the customs of the world, and we love to catch other brothers and sisters into the idolatry as well. It's no different today. We get caught up in foolishness today, and we need to have a crowd of Jake to feed into it. Mm -hmm. And because of all of this, the Most High said, I'm going to turn myself away from you. It's not going to be until you're in your affliction that you seek me early. Very good. So let's go back and read that verse again in our second verses, uh, chapter 1, verse 18. Second Ezra, chapter 1 and verse 18, saying, Why hast thou brought us us? Why hast thou brought us into this wilderness to kill us? We are we are a, 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 a um faithless people. Mm -hmm. After all the blessings, we are why did you bring us out here to kill us? That's the question we had to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Why you brought us out here to kill us for? Read on. It had been better for us to have served the Egyptians than to die in this wilderness. That's a smack in the face of the Most High, mm -hmm. to tell him that. To say it was better for us to serve the Egyptians than come out here to die in the wilderness. Man, I brought you this far to kill you. Hold this real quick. Go to, um, go to Isaiah 30. Better to serve the crocodile God. Yeah, <laughs> for life. Man, listen to me. Now, if he ain't a loving God to have to deal with us, boy. Um... Second is, um, no, Isaiah 30 and verse, um, cause, um, 30 and 12. I'll start with verse 9. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 9. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceit. You know you are broken people when you're saying, tell me a lie. Tell me what feels good. I don't want to hear what's right. I don't want to know what's right. I, I want to believe a lie. Read on. Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. We don't want to hear the Holy One of Israel. We don't know what. We want to trust in Egypt. How do I know that? Read the beginning of the chapter. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 1. No, no, start with verse 2. Verse 2. That walk n to go down into Egypt and have not asked of my mouth. And we do, we will not, even today, we will not ask of God's mouth. We will trust in politics. Y'all didn't learn yet? I'm, I'm talking about people who's a little old in age, like when a little grain up. Y'all didn't learn that Kennedy wasn't here to help you? I know you thought. Bill Clinton was the was a was the other black man. He wasn't here. To, Obama, they're not here to help. You'd keep on trusting in this. Read on. And have not asked to go down at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. And that's us today. Same like back then. We trust in America. When were we going to learn America is not here for us to help us? This is our land of captivity. It's never going to get right, and there will be a few of us that will coon ourselves out to be accepted into this stuff. But for the most part, all people are struggling, suffering at the hands of our enemies. And we know to this day, I'm looking at, I was talking to Kanai on the drive here. I said, we're so disconnected. I was reading an article um, when they, was, they took a, 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 long, a young little sister, it's Christ's sister. Uh, she couldn't have been no more than five, six years old. Took her here in Texas and took her all the way to New York to put in a detention camp in New York City. And I'm sitting there saying, damn, old people are not in the uproar behind this stuff like what they're doing to these people. We are not. We trust in America. Jump on down. Back to uh, verse 12. Verse 12. Wherefore, thus saith the, the Holy One of Israel, 
Because you despise this word and trust in oppression. You trust in oppression. And perverseness. And stay there on. And that's what the captain was saying earlier, the scripture he was quoting, that you trust in oppression and perverseness and you stay there. You're good. You're so beaten down as a people, you just, that's what you think is normal. You think it's normal. Guess what? No different than it was. Let's go to book of Numbers 14. Drop that whole uh, second Ezra. You know, Bishop, through Esau's media, we only focus on what the white man tells us to focus on. Mm -hmm. If the white man doesn't say to focus on it in his news, we won't give a damn about it. I remember there was a time um, <laughs> a few years ago, there was something that was called the um, Ice Bucket Challenge. I know probably a lot of kids on the social media remember that, where Jake was just off doing, pouring buckets of ice on each other's heads to be able to give a donation to something called the Lou Gehrig's disease. And when you look at the Lou Gehrig's disease, it's not a disease that even really hits Jake. Right. Now here it is, our people are dying every day of diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, all these different things that affect Jake community. But Esau tells you in the media, no, don't give a damn about that. Whatever Esau is afflicted by, then care. Mm -hmm. And nothing has changed in the format even with these tragedies. If Esau says, okay, Sandy Hook happened, focus on that, a Negro will cry and lament <laughs> until it ain't no tomorrow. We'll cry out to the high heavens. But if you see your own people in detention centers, you see the people, our people, many of them scattered out in Libya, still in hard bondage as though it was the 15, 1600s. Wow. You won't do nothing and say nothing about that. You only pipe to the beat of the white man's drum. Watch this. Uh, Numbers 14, verse 1. The book of Numbers, chapter 14 and verse 1. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in this wilderness? And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword that our wives and children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? Whose idea was that? Wow. <laughs> who, who was the guy that started that, that, that idea? And everybody was like, yeah, I think that's a good yeah. idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's go. Read on. We just can't. Damn. It, that's not Stockholm. You just came out of Egypt. They, listen, you don't forget you was making bricks out of spit and mortar mm -hmm. and clay and, and hay? You must have forgot that? So soon, you so beaten out as a people, that, that's what you think is normal. Read on. And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Yeah, we need a captain. Let's, let's, who, Al Sharpton, let's find a captain. <laughs> Creflo died, let's find a captain so we can stay back here. Read on. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. Stop, I can imagine. Hold this. Drop that. Go to Numbers 11. Watch this. So we came to a point with saying it's, it was better for us to stay in Egypt under the hand of our oppressors. Uh, Eleven and one. Numbers chapter 11, verse 1. And then I want you to jump to verse 5. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled. And the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. Because they complained after all the Lord said, after all that I've done for you, you complaining? Jump on down to verse 5. Verse 5. We remember the fish which we did eat freely, which we did eat in Egypt freely the cucumbers and the melons, and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all besides this manner before our eyes. So see how ungrateful we are? It says, we remember in Egypt, man, how we eat the fish, which we did eat in Egypt freely, and the cucumbers and melons. Look how life was in Egypt. Let me tell you something. <laughs> and that's how we are today. Mm -hmm. Because if Esau get that little bit of EBT, you ain't going nowhere. You're like, this is, we're living a life, EBT. Mm -hmm. I ain't got to go work... Let me tell you, ho. The black man is a hoe. 
and the white man's a pimp. And he give you just enough to make it through the day. Mm-hmm. So you can come back to him tomorrow for another dollar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you and you comfortable laying on your back like a hoe. Don't want to get up at work. Black men is a I mean, black men today is a joke. We're a joke. Mm-hmm. We're a joke. We're a joke. What what we doing? We got these big old six nine Negroes dancing. Do, 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 do you love me? Do you do, stupid? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we ain't gonna get this captivity with, with Negroes like that. <laughs> right. Size 14 shoe doing some little sissy girl dance. My people getting people in captivity. While we getting thrown in concentration there, you got to do six, nine, 13 and a half foot, making little hearts, jump out of his car and dancing and do kind of look clown. You're a clown. You're a clown. You're a clown. You guys are clowns. You're clowns. I mean, if it wasn't for the Israelites on this earth right now, this place would be up in smoke. We're the only thing that's keeping this thing together. That's what was a joke. Okay, after I vented about that, what did I want to say? Oh, uh, yeah, okay. It says, I want you to read verse 6. Of uh, second half? No, no, right there, 11 and 6. I, I, mm. Got it. Verse 6. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes. You see what it says? There was nothing at all besides this manna. There's nothing else we have to eat. So damn, God. Man, man, you're really, un- you're really unreasonable, man. All you did was give me manna to eat, and that's all you had. We was better off because we had melanin leaks out there. But you was working 21 hours out of the day, and you, <laughs> you were dying of heat strokes out there, and all you got is manna. Now, let me explain something about manna. Uh, anybody know what manna is? Anybody here? Go ahead. Manna. Okay, he said bread. It was angel's food. But it wasn't just like... See, we think, ah, oh, it's a little piece of wafer, a cracker. That's how we mm-hmm. think of manna. Mm-hmm. We're going to read what the Bible says manna was. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon 16. It, it was a little more than, let's just read it. Wisdom of Solomon 16. We read Wisdom of Solomon 16, I think it was like around verse 12. Give me a second, I got to get there. Is that it? Mm-mm. That's a mollifying class. Um, oh, verse 20. 20. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16 and verse 20. Instead, whereof thou fedest thine own people with angels' food. So he said he fed his people with angels' food. And this wasn't no regular food. This was no rich cracker. Read on. <laughs> and did it send them from heaven, bread prepared without their labor. He said he send them from heaven, Bread prepared without their labor. They didn't have to labor for it. He just gave it to them. When you was back in uh, Dagon, do you understand in captivity, when you was eating melons and garlic and leeks and fish for free, Negro, you wasn't eating it for free. You were laboring. They had to feed your dumb behind to keep you working. You're like no other animal that they got to keep you fed so you could be able to work. What, you think you sat around there all day with your feet kicked up eating melon? No, you was working damn it to starvation, and they fed you. And then you went back to work. He said, this bread was given to you without you having to prepare it. But watch on, read on. Able to content every man's delight and agreeing to every taste. Do you understand what that means? <laughs> Able to content to every man's delight and agreeing with every man's taste. Read on. For thy sustenance declared thy sweetness unto thy children. And serving to the appetite of the eater, tempered itself to every man's liking. Do you know what that means? That that bread, when you tasted it, it tasted like whatever you wanted to taste like? So if you wanted to taste like a steak, it tastes like a steak. If you wanted to taste like fish, it tastes like fish. If you want to taste like a ros con pollo, it tastes like a ros con pollo. You want a burrito, it was a burrito. And guess what? The best part about it, you didn't have to labor for it. But we said, nah, God. Mm-hmm. I want EBT. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's go back to Estrus. Let's go back. He was like, I, all, we ate garlic and leeks for free. All we had was manna. Man, I'm telling you something, boy. Mm-hmm. Very entitled people. That's, that's yeah, what we yeah. are. Very, very entitled. And that's how a lot of us is, especially when we come into the truth. We, we um, you know, going back to what you said, Bishop, about Kennedy. Even the white man was wise enough to know that as he was building a nation, he had to tell the people, don't ask what this country could do for you, 
but what you could do for it. That's it. Okay. A lot of people come into Israel and say, well, what's Israel going to do for me? What, uh -huh. what handout? What collection? What this, what that? Oh, you're not going to do nothing for me? I'm out. I'm a bounce. Mm -hmm. But don't really ask, well, what things do I feel entitled to? Welfare mentality. Ask what you could do to serve the Lord because of the Lord's mercies that were not consumed. None of us deserve this. We don't deserve nothing. We deserve death. So anything that the Lord gives us, all praises, is a blessing. But here it is now. The Lord gave us angels food. However much to our satisfaction we would be full, that's what the manna did. But we still didn't appreciate it because we felt like we deserve it. We don't deserve yep. nothing. We're entitled. Excellent point. And I'd say, and, and it leads back to even today, as you were saying, with EBT today. EBT is supposed to help people that are going through financial struggles. But no one thing, Esau only puts that in place to keep you in bondage. They want you to depend on them. That's the reason why they destroyed Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Rosewood. They destroyed it. We had thriving cities in the time of segregation where we were becoming millionaires. And, and they said, nah, mm -hmm. we don't need an independent Negro. We need you all to always need us like a hoe to a pimp. Mm -hmm. And guess what? We just like it like that. We just like it like that. So EB, I'm I've, I know people personally that were on EBT generational. Mm. Two, three generations mm -hmm. of family. That when you told a brother, they came into the truth, listen, you got to come off of that and get a job. They was like, I'm, literally, they was upset. Mm -hmm. No, you have to go get a job, brother, if you could take care of your family, right? It's like, no. Like, they didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. They did not want to do it. Like, well, you got to go then. <laughs> now, I'm not saying if you're on and you need help. That's not the point. I'm saying, but brother's like, I'm not working because somebody's going to give me something. Nah, that's not how you live. Yeah, that's not how you live. It's crazy that the rationale of somebody who's not keeping the commandments, to me, is incredible. Like, how, how um, the Most High gave Solomon the, reasons, the reasonings of men. When well, you're not in these commandments, you're irrational. That was, that was Stockholm Syndrome long before it was Stockholm Syndrome. And even today in America... Going out to camp, going out to fly missions, you notice that the people there, a lot of them say, well, the white, white man was the best thing that ever happened to us. Like, what, what would it be like yeah, for us to rule our own, our own nation? <laughs> I heard a white man, I heard a that was the best thing. He wow. pulls out of jungles of Africa. Yeah. But anyway, back to being a man. You're a man laying in bed. Hard-bodied man could get up, and you lay in bed. I, I'm just in my mind. This is, you know, I, pull, I, pull, uh, I color pictures in my head. You laying up, hair on your chest with your wife. With your EBT card on the, on the, on the side dresser right there. <laughs> and then you like, you feel like, yeah, babe, just run the store and go get some chicken right now. Mm. You don't even want to go out and try to, you don't want to try to go out and feed your own family. And feed your, man, you're not a man. I'm telling you, so you're not a man. If that's how you live your life, man, you're a joke. You're just a child trapped in a man's body. Mm. That's all you are. You're a child. <sighs> Where are we at? Oh. Second Ezra, I didn't, I didn't get the first chapter yet, man. Second Ezra's one. Verse six again. Second Ezra, chapter one, verse six. Because no, 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 no. verse nineteen. Ha, verse nineteen, yeah. Then had I pity upon your mornings and gave you manna to eat, so you did eat the angels' bread. And that's what it's told. We ate the angels' bread. Read on. When you were thirsty, I did not cleave. Did I not cleave the rock? And waters flowed out of your fill. Right, he said, you're thirsty, I gave you water. And there's a, I forgot where's the numbers, where he, where he put the tree and the sweet in the water for the people. Because people was complaining, remember that? Mm. Where he, he, threw, he threw the tree in the water, and it sweetened the water for the people. He said, I gave you what you want. You're thirsty, here's water. You want this? Okay, you don't want no more matter? Okay, I'm, I'm going to give you quail. I'm going to keep on giving you whatever you want. I'm trying to, he's, I could imagine a husband to a wife, who said, you ungrateful wretch. And then you go hold yourself with another nation or another God after all I've done for you? Man, you got to die. You got to go. You got to go. You got to go. Read on. Did you want the sweet water? Are you finding it? Exodus 15. Oh, let's read it. A 15 by 15? Uh, 22. Oh. The book of Exodus. 15. Fifteen twenty-two. Uh, 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 man, I was. Uh, it's it's is it a sixteen? Twenty-five. 
1625? Exodus chapter 15, verse 25. And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord shewed him a tree, which when he had cast... Uh, uh, let me start a little higher. Read verse 24. Verse 24. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord shewed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statue and an ordinance, and there he proved them. Yeah. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statues, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Okay. So the Lord sweetened that water for them. He showed them, this is how you sweeten the water. Put this tree inside that water, and the water is going to be made sweet. So the Lord kept on trying to appease us as a people. Um, go back. Second Ezra, chapter 1 and verse 20. When you were thirsty, did I not cleave the rock, and waters flowed out to your fill? For the heat I covered you with the leaves of the trees. I divided among you a fruitful land, and cast out the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Philistines before you. What shall I yet do more for you, saith the Lord? Well, so what more can I do for you all? Read on. Thus saith the Almighty Lord, when ye were in the wilderness, in the river of the Amorites, being athirst and blaspheming my name, I gave you not fire for your blasphemies, but I, but they cast a tree oh, in the right water. Here. This is what we're talking about. Read on. And made the river sweet. What shall I do unto thee, O Jacob? Thou Judah, wouldst would, would not obey me? I will turn me to other nations, and unto those will I give my name, and they may keep my statues. So now, here we go. This is where people fall off in Christianity now. <laughs> That's where they go left. God said he's the God of Israel, none else. That's what the Bible says, uh, Joel 2. But here's the point. Read verse 24 again. <clears throat> verse 24. What shall I do unto thee, O Jacob, thou Judah, wouldest not obey me? I will turn me to other nations, and unto those will I give my name, that they may keep my statutes. So when he says, I will turn to other nations, he's talking about the northern kingdom. Because remember, they were <clears throat> in captivity. <clears throat> they went into captivity about 150 years Prior to Judah falling into captivity to the Babylon, they went to the, through the Assyrians under Salmaneser. So they were carried away to Nineveh, wherever they went to. Well, Nineveh was the capital. Uh, so they had a 150-year head start. They were disconnected from the land long before we were. By the time Judah and Benjamin Levi went, we were only gone for 70 years, and then Cyrus the Persian allowed us to go back. So we remembered who we were, northern kingdom, really was disconnected, and then second Ezra 13, many of them came to this side of the earth. So the point was, when he said, he said I, will, I will go unto another nation. How do we explain that? Another nation, because I know people are going to think church and think, see, all nations, that's where the Gentiles come in, meaning the other nations. No, it's not talking about that. Let's go to the book of, oh, let's, real quick, let's jump over to verse 35. Same, same book, go to verse 35. Verse 35 of Second Ezra chapter 1. Your houses will I give to a people that shall come, which not having heard of me, yet shall believe me, to whom I have shewed no signs, yet shall they, yet they shall do uh, that I have commanded them. Read on. They have seen no prophets. Here's the point. They shall call their sins to remembrance and shall acknowledge them. These people are going to call their sins to remembrance. They're going to call these people that's going to come in, was going to, that he's going to have, that's going to be of another, another nation, they're going to call their sins to remember. To remember means you're going to begin to remember the laws that you broke as a people. The laws were only given to Israel. Watch this, Hosea 1. And that's the point I want in, that, in those two verses, the last part. They shall call their sins to remembrance. The other nations couldn't remember the, their sins because the laws were never given to them to have in the first place. Is it one and nine? Mm -hmm. That's it? Read, read it for me. Pages. The book of Hosea, chapter one, 
verse 9. You know. The book of Hosea, chapter 1 and verse 9. Then said God, call his people, lo am I. His people. Call his name, lo am I. For yet are not my people, and I will not be your God. Then said God, call his name, lo am I. For ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. He was talking to the northern kingdom. At that point, they were, be, they were being considered another nation. He says he's no longer their people, and, he, uh, and he's not their God. But he said what? Read the next verse. Verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sands of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. Or another nation. There it will be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. God came back and said, I'm going to show mercy to them. The people that were not my people, that was considered another nation, he said, don't worry, you're going to come back. And one day you'll be called the sons of God again. I don't want to make this about Jew and Gentile, the class, but that was, going to, that was a prophecy that they were going to come back. And after they come back, this was going to happen. Next verse. Verse 11. Then shall the children of Judah... And the children of Israel be gathered together. And that's happening right now. The tr children of Judah and Jerusalem are gathering. The children of Israel and Judah, the children of Ju Judah and Israel are gathering self back together, northern and southern kingdom. But first the point was that God said, I'm going to go to a people, another nation, because you know what, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, y'all ain't listening. Y'all in Babylon, and you're still serving other gods. You're going off. You know what? I'm going to embarrass you. I'm going to provoke you to jealousy to another people that don't even know, that's been disconnected so long. Watch that. I'm going to use them. That was the prophecy back in Deuteronomy 32. I'm going to use them. Acts 10. Isaiah 11. 1 Peter 1. James 1. Ephesians 2. That was a prophecy of them coming back in. Uh, let's go back to 2nd Ezra chapter 1 verse 25. 2nd Ezra chapter 1 and verse 25. <clears throat> Seeing ye have forsaken me, I will forsake you also. When ye desire me to be gracious unto you, I shall have no mercy upon you. That's Proverbs 1 28 is, is so I call but you refuse. There so I will I will laugh at your calamities. When your calamities come as a whirlwind and desolation, whatever, I forgot, but it's Proverbs 1. Read on. Whensoever ye shall call upon me, I will not hear you. For ye have defiled your hands with blood, and your feet are swift to commit manslaughter. Read on. Ye have not as it were forsaken me, but your own selves, saith the Lord. God said, you didn't forsake me, but your own selves. That's why he said to Ezekiel, who walked in the same time period, what Ezekiel said, God said, why do you want to die? Why do you want to die for? You're not forsaking me, you forsake yourself. Read on. Thus saith the Almighty Lord, Have I not prayed you as a father his sons, as a mother her daughters, and a nurse her young babes, mm -hmm. that you would be my people, and I should be your God, that ye would be my children, and I should be your father? I gathered you together as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings. But now what shall I do unto you? I will cast you out from my face. And that's, the, that, it, Lord said, listen, at the end of this, I have to cast you out. I gathered you up. I was a father to you, a mother to you. I nursed you. I've done everything. At this point, all I could do now is cast you out. I have, a judgment has to pass. That's why we read that about, remember in, um, <clears throat> in uh, Amos, Amos 9, Amos 9, 9, or Amos, I don't think it goes to the 9, does it? Yeah, 9. Or maybe, maybe it's Amos, Amos 7, I'm sorry. Amos 7. Let's read Amos 7 and 1. We're going to come right back here. He said, I cast you out. Book of Amos, chapter 7, uh, verse 1. I'm going to start it. You got it? Mm. Good. The book of Amos, chapter 7, and verse 1. 
Thus hath the Lord God shoot unto me, and behold, he formed grasshoppers in the beginning of the shooting up of the latter growth. And lo, it was latter growth after the king's mowing. So it says, Thus saith the Lord God, uh, Thus saith the Lord God showeth unto me, and behold, he formed grasshoppers in the beginning of the shooting up of the latter growth. The latter growth is the second harvest. The second growing of the year. I mean, you have the first fruits that come in the beginning of the year. Then you have your feast of ingathering, which is the end of the year. So the, the, the shooting up of the, of, the, um, of the grain or whatever during the second year, he sent grasshoppers to destroy all the crops. Read on. Verse 2. And it came to pass that when, it had, when they had made an end of eating the grass of the land, then I said, O Lord God, forgive, I beseech thee. By whom shall Jacob arise? For he is small. So what happened? It must have been a bad winter because you needed that crops to grow. They ate all your crops. So that winter came, what was you going to have? What did they do? They prayed to God. God, forgive us. We, need, we messed up. Have mercy upon us. Read on. Verse 3. The Lord repented of this. It shall not be, saith the Lord. The Lord was sorry. He said, okay, I hear you. I understand. Okay, good. You said you're sorry. I forgive you. Read on. Thus hath the Lord God shewed unto me, and behold, the Lord God called to contend by fire, and it devoured the great deep, and did eat up a part. And that's what I'm just trying to read on. Then said I, O Lord God, cease, I beseech thee. By whom shall Jacob arise, for he is small? So they asking God, please stop. Read on. Verse 6. The Lord repented for this. This also shall not be set, shall not be, saith the Lord and, God. And the Lord said, okay, no problem. I hear you. You said you're sorry? Cool. Read on. Thus he shewed me, and behold, the Lord stood upon a wall made by plumb line with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said unto me, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a plumb line. Then said the Lord, behold, I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will not again pass by them anymore. The Lord said, the plumb line is, if anybody knows what a plumb line is, it's a string, and at the end of it, it has a weight. So when you hang it, it'll give you a vertical line, straight. The Lord, so, so, the, so the, the vision he had was Lord hanging a plumb line over a wall, giving a straight line. And what the Lord was saying at this point, there's no more wiggle room. I'm not, I'm not changing no more. This, it is what it is at this point. You go against me, there's no more turning back. I, you said sorry twice, cool. After the first or second admonition, anyway, reject. God said, no more. Cross this line and see what happens. <laughs> this is a straight commandment you have. I'm not doing it no more. I had enough. No more. What happened? <laughs> we went to captivity. We kept on, I'm telling you, the most high, let me say to Isaiah, he said, um, come let me reason with you, Israel. Come on, let's work this out. I'm, you, you read scholar. I make you white as snow, man. I'm trying to help you. Come on. Why is the Lord talking about less reason? Who, why does the Lord got a reason with us? He's like, I'm trying to help you, God. Why do you want to die? Come on. But you know what? You could push him, but so far. After a while, he's like, What else can a father do to a child? I had enough now. Now you just got to go feel. Thus, we sitting here in friggin' Austin, Texas in 2018. Because <laughs> he just had enough. Put us up for adoption. Yeah, in friggin' yeah, uh, read verse nine. Verse nine. And the high places of Isaac shall be desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise again the house of Jeroboam with the sword. He said, I'll rise against he said, I'm gonna destroy you all now. Jump to chapter eight, verse eleven. Uh chapter eight, verse ten. Second uh, Amos chapter eight and verse ten, and I will turn unto I will turn your feasts into mourning, and all your songs into lamentation, and I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins and baldness on every head, and I will make it as the morning of an only son, and the end thereof as a bitter day. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land. Not a famine of bread, nor a thirst of water, but of the hearing of the words of the Lord. Do you understand that? 
even though there was a literal famine, but he said, this famine I'm talking about is even worse. He said, I'm going to give a, a famine of the word. There ain't going to be no word there because you wasn't listening, so good. I'm turning fully away from you. There'll be no man to correct you to get you right. At that point, you're just going to have to go through it right there. Those men that you were there, they're going to be very few of them that's going to be out there. You think Jeremiah was everywhere? No. You think, you think uh, who was there? Ezekiel was everywhere? Daniel? No. Babylon was big. Before there's prophets in every province, every city all over the place, people prophesied. God said, it's going to be a famine. It's going to be, it's going to be scarce with them. You always listen to them in the first place. You all killed off my prophets. So now it's going to be a famine of the word. But here's the point. Even when there was a prophet there, you didn't listen to him anyway. Mm-hmm. Jeremiah was trying to tell him this. Ask Jeremiah, what should we do? Jeremiah 42. Don't go get it. What should we do? Jeremiah told him, what did they do? Ah, we're not doing that anyway. Mm-hmm. We're not listening to you, Jeremiah. I'm like, what the hell you asked me for in the first place then? <laughs> do you? Let's go back. Um, yeah, second Ezra is one. Second Ezra, chapter 1 and verse 25. Seeing ye have forsaken me, I will forsake you also. When ye desire me to be gracious unto you, I shall have no mercy upon you. We all better be mindful of that. God said, you forsake me, and the day God forsook us, look what happened. And in our personal lives now, we better be mindful, because when God decided to forsake us, we're screwed. Ain't no calling on him, then he don't want to hear it. He don't, don't want to hear no I'm sorry's. Mm-mm. You get to a point where he just has enough. Read on. Verse 26. Whensoever ye shall call upon me, I will not hear you. For ye have defiled your hands with blood, and your feet are swift to commit manslaughter. Okay. Uh, uh, John 9, 30-something. Uh, Lord does not hear the prayer. 36, right? 32. 9, 31. 31. 931 of John. That's it, right. It's the ninth chapter, right? Mm-hmm. Nine. Mm-hmm. 31. Mm, yeah, 31. Mm-hmm. The book of John, chapter 9 and verse 31. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. I mean, that seems very simple. That, 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 that ain't no, that's not that hard to understand. God does not hear sinners, people who refuse to repent. But him that doeth his will, his will, him he heareth. His will is his commandment, Psalms 40. Him he heareth. So let's go back. Second Ezra, chapter 1 and verse 27. For yet have not as it were forsaken me, but your own self, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Almighty Lord, have I not prayed you as a father his sons, and as a mother her daughters, and a, a nurse her young babes, that ye would be my people, and I should be your God, that ye would be my children, and I should be your father. I gathered you together as a hen gathers her chickens under her wings, but now what shall I do unto you? I will cast you out from my face. That's called captivity. Read on. When ye offer unto me, I will turn my face from you, from your solemn feast days, from your new moons, and your circumcisions have I forsaken. Go to the book of Amos chapter 5. Mm. 5.21. The book of Amos chapter 5 and verse 21. I hate, I despise your feast days. I will not smell your solemn assemblies. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vials. But let judgment run down as waters. That's what he wants. Read on. And righteousness as a mighty stream. Read on. Have ye offended unto me sacrifices? Have you offered? Have you offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years, O house of Israel? But ye have borne the tabernacle of your molech. He said, for forty years you was in the wilderness, and you offered sacrifices to me, but you still was born in your, your molech. 
He said, you, that's why he said, you can't serve two masters. He said, you can't do it. So you, he said, I, I despise your feast days. You didn't come to perform me on the new moon. Meanwhile, you're still serving other gods. You still sing against me? He said, I'm tired of that stuff. He said, I'm tired of your feast days. I'm tired of your song. Stop singing. There's somebody here one day, assistant here singing, and, and she just irritated me. I don't know why. She just, she just fully irritated me. I told Captain, I don't ever want to hear her in here singing again. Never. I don't hear nothing. She said, but love. And she's like, yeah, and I'm just going to be my song favorite. I'm like, shut up, asshole. <laughs> she just got a Monday. I don't know. I can't tell why. Just because she's full of crap. Mm. Yeah, but something just for just for God and you know everybody. I want you all to join in with me. <laughs> yeah, okay. Shut oh. up and sit down. Because you filter it. She's gone. I'm tired of you singing. Guys, I despise that. But guess what? We was wicked as hell because guess when we got to the New Testament, what we were doing? We was in the, we was in the, uh, in the tabernacle with tables set up with with with. Uh, Doves. With doves, like yeah, you can buy a dove. Mm -hmm. You wait for people to sin. We were so we were so conditioned to sinning that we they set up tables with animals so you could buy for your sin. You got a little dove. Mm. Uh, you were smoking weed, dove. Mm -hmm. We got that dove over there. For you. That's a nice fat <laughs> one right here. Two get two two for one special. Mm -hmm. Christ said these niggas has lost their mind. They've made my father house a den of thieves. They turned business. They turned sin into business. Listen. I'm going to go pick up the weed. I'm going to meet you over there. Yo, pick up two turtle doves so we come back. God's like, these niggas lost their mind. That's why God said, I don't want to hear I despise your feast days. Don't come before me with that crap. That's why Christ beat them in the, in the temple. Like there was a whole business thriving off sin. That's wicked as hell. Like somebody was unemployed if you weren't, if you weren't doing wickedness. Okay, what catches what, what what strikes me the most is that Negroes had the audacity to set up shop. That's why God said, "I hate, I despise your feast days." You think you come before me and I smell that? Side? He said, "I don't smell your feast. Y'all have nothing to do with me. That's between you and your God, Satan." Okay, let's go back. Uh, for Second Ezra chapter one and verse thirty. Two, I sent unto you my servants, the prophets, whom ye have taken and slain and torn their bodies in pieces. Remember Elijah said, I'm the only prophet left? That's why it says, they said, it says, it'd be famine in the word. Why? Because you all done killed off the prophets. You didn't want to hear them. You didn't want to hear the words of God. God said, man, you've done killed off the men that were trying to guide you back to me. Read on. Whose blood I will require of your hands, mm. saith the Lord. Hey, remember, they wanted... As a matter of fact, the king wanted to kill uh, Jeremiah. I think he was just too afraid. But he said, don't, don't even bring him to me because he never prophesied good to me in the first yeah. place. I didn't even want to hear him. Just don't let him come. <laughs> I throw him in jail. Throw him in jail. Most I put the spirit on him to, to keep him fed because he would have died of hunger there. He's like, throw him in jail. I don't even want to hear this guy. We killed off. They, well, not we. They killed off the prophet. Lord forbid I killed <laughs> off the prophet. Read on. Verse 33. Thus saith the Almighty Lord, your house is desolate. I will cast you out as the wind doth stubble. And your children shall not be fruitful, for they have despised my commandment and done the thing that is evil before me. Watch this. Your houses will I give to a people that shall come, which not have hearing, having heard of me, yet shall believe me, to whom I have shewed no signs. Yet shall they do as I have commanded them. So shall I think of Judah... Uh, in Babylon, hearing this word, but God is saying that He's going to give this to a people that He's not going to show no signs. He's going to give this away to somebody else. Read on. Verse thirty-six: They have seen no prophets, yet shall call their sins to remembrance. Yet these people are going to call their sins to remembrance. Yet they have seen no prophets. So in the time of Christ, when Christ came on earth, He said, "Prophets not." Respecting his own land. You up in, in Galatia, wherever you at, these people are repenting, coming back. Acts 10, the Holy Spirit put upon Cornelius and these other believers. And that's why I said, and they were astonished that the, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit was poured upon them. Because the one in Jerusalem, those that were grew up, it says, remember it says, you know, Matthew 10, 5 and 6, 
go not into the way of the, the Samaritans, enter you not, but rather go to lordship of the house of Israel. He was some go to Judah first. They still were, it's the only way I can think of, connected to the laws of God. These people were scattered. They were living as heathen for God knows how long at this point. God said, I'm going to show it to them, and I'm going to embarrass you with them. You're going to be jealous over them because I'm going to raise them up. Read on. Verse 37, I take to witness the grace of the people to come whose little ones rejoice in gladness. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirit they believe the thing that I say. And now, brother, behold what glory and see the people that cometh from the east, mm -hmm. unto whom I will give for leaders Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Oseus, Amos, and Micaeus, Joel, Abadus, and Jonas, Nahum, and Abuk, Abukuk, Sophanus, Sophanias, Aeus, Zachary, and Malachi, which is called also an angel of the Lord. So verse 37 again. Verse 37. I take to witness the grace of the people to come, whose little ones rejoice in gladness. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes. He's referring to the northern kingdom. Read on. Yet in spirit they believe the thing that I say. But they believe without seeing. They believe. Man, then it's none of them seen uh, the Messiah. But they believe without saying. That's why Hebrews 11 says, 11 and 1, faith is things that seem, faith are the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that's not seen. How do they know their faith? Based on what the scriptures show, they believe in what the scripture says. Read on. And now, brother, behold, what glory and what glory, and see the people that cometh from the east. It says, what glory, and see if the people that's going to come from the east. Remember, many of them went up from Jerusalem, carrying the captivity over to Nineveh that way. It said, look at the glory of the people that's going to come from the east. Read on. Unto whom I will give for leaders, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Oseus, Amos, Amos, Micaeus, Read on. Joel, Abedus, Jonas, Nahum, Habakkuk. Habakkuk, read on. Sophonias, Zephanias, Zephanias. Ag Agias, Agai, Zachary, mm -hmm. Zacharias, Malachi, mm -hmm. which is also called an angel of the Lord. Okay, so I'm gonna chapter two. I'm gonna start it. We're not gonna get through it, but I'm gonna read a little bit. Uh, Thus saith the Lord: I brought this people out of bondage and gave them my commandments by my servants, the prophets, whom they would not hear but despise my counsel. The mother that bare them said unto them, Go your way, ye children, for I am a widow and forsaken. I brought you up with gladness, but with sorrow and heaviness I have lost you, for you have sinned before the Lord your God and have done the thing that is evil before him. But what shall I now do unto you? I am a widow and forsaken. Go your way. My children, ask mercy of the Lord. As for me, O Father, I, I call upon thee for a witness over the mother of these children, which would not keep thy covenant, that thou bring them into confusion and their mother to a spoil, and their mother to a spoil that there may be no offspring of them. Damn. Let them be scattered abroad among the heathen. Let their names be put out of the earth, for they have despised my covenant. Jeremiah. Don't get it. We will be discontinued for our heritage. Or name be put out the earth. Remember, when we was in captivity under the Babylonians and the Persians. We knew who we were. We were never confused of who we were. So he's talking about future prophecy. We always Northern Kingdom might have been a little more disconnected, but we weren't. But today, what do we call ourselves? African Americans, blacks. On what happened? We have been dispersed throughout the earth. We've been given by names, by words, call some other stuff. We forgot, we fainted of who we were. It says, verse 8, Woe unto you, woe unto thee, Ashur, that thou wouldest hide us the unrighteous in thee. O thou wicked people, remember what I did unto Sodom and Gomorrah. So Ashur was the Assyrians, uh, and we hid amongst these other nations, carried away. We, same, it was no different than what we did in Isaiah when we went to the Egyptian. We tried to go into the other nations to assimilate into it, and God said, I'm going to destroy them too. 
uh, verse 9. Whose land lieth in clods of, <clears throat> of pitch, that's to my side of Gomorrah, and heaps of ashes, even so also will I do unto them that hear me not, saith the Almighty Lord. Thus saith the Lord unto Ezra, tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem, which I would have given unto Israel. That's what he's saying. Tell them I will give the kingdom of Jerusalem, which I would have given unto Israel. Their glory, shall, their glory also will I take unto me and give, these, and give these everlasting tabernacles, which I prepare for them. They shall have the tree of life for an ointment of sweet Savior, they shall neither labor nor worry. Go ye, go and ye shall receive pray for a few days unto you that they may be shortened. The kingdom is already prepared for you. Watch. Take heaven and earth to witness, for I have broken the evil in pieces and created good, for I live, saith the Lord. So we're going to go back. Now you can read for me, Kamai. I want you to pick up at verse uh, 10. Second Ezra, chapter 2 and verse 10. Thus saith the Lord unto Ezra, Tell my people that I have given them the kingdom of Jerusalem, which I would have given unto Israel. Their glory also will I take unto me, and give these everlasting tabernacles which I have prepared for them. They shall have the tree of life for an ointment of sweet savor. They shall neither labor nor be weary. Go, and ye shall receive. Pray for a few days that ye may be shortened. That they that they may be shortened. The kingdom is already prepared for you. Watch. Read. Take heaven and earth to witness, for I have broken the evil in pieces and created the good. For I live, saith the Lord. One more verse. Mother, embrace thy children and bring them up with gladness. Make their feet as fast as a pillar, for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord. So the Lord is telling us here, tell Ezra's that. I'm going to raise them back up. I'm going to raise back up Israel. I'm going to raise them back. But he said, when you read in verse, in verse 10, he said, Thus saith the Lord unto Ezra, Tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem, which I would have given unto Israel. Israel ain't talking about the northern kingdom. He's talking about Judah, the southern kingdom. He said, I'm going to give it to other people now. I'm going to raise them up. I'm going to raise them up. And you're going to read later on. He said, I'm going to raise them up from the dead. So what happened? The Israel, northern kingdom that was scattered, they were living like heathen. They were the dead walking, the walking dead. God said, I'm going to raise them back up. And the whole purpose of raising them back up was to humiliate Judah for sitting against him, for turning. He warned them prior. He said, look what I'm doing to Israel, to northern kingdom. We watched it, and then we went and did the same thing. God said, damn, why do you think it was more severe for Judah to fall into this than it was for the northern kingdom. Anybody think about it? Why do you think it was more severe? Go ahead. What scripture would you use? Yes, yeah, very good. The scepter should not depart from Judah. Judah was a lead. They should have known better. They should have known better. Not that all of them should have not known. But much is given, much is required. Hold this. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy 32. Uh, verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 15. But Jeshron waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxing fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations they provoked him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not. To gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Remember, and then when you read in, uh, I think it's Jeremiah 2. One second, let me see it real quick. Yeah, Jeremiah 2 and 11, hold this. Uh, 
the book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, and verse 11. Hath a nation changed their gods, which ye are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Right. How do we know he's talking to Judah? Verse 2, 1 and 2. Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 2. Tell me verse 1. Verse 1. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Ananoth, in the land of Benjamin, whom, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, the king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. We don't. And it came also in the days of Jehoiakim, that the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the carrying away of Jerusalem, captive in the fifth month. So it was doing, he was prophesying during the time of the Babylonians. And what were we doing? We changed our God into new gods. After, we, after all that happened to, to Israel, the northern kingdom, we went and did the same thing. So watch this. Uh, go back to Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 18. 18. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. Read on. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. He said he's going to hide his face from us. He wants to see what the end of us shall be. For us, the end of us meant what? Captivity. Read on. For they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. It says, children in whom there is no faith. Read on. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. Right. These other, these other gods. Read on. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those that are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. And that's where you read it from. That's where it came from. That foolish nation was talking about the northern kingdom. It was already prophesied. The Lord expected more from Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. I'm starting with Judah because it said the scepter should not depart from Judah, nor the lawgiver from between his feet. So the lawgiver was not, was not Levi. It was really was Judah from the beginning. So when we get to back to um, Second Ezra. Chapter 2, uh, verse 14. Now I want to go back up. Um, 10. Second Ezra, chapter 2, and verse 10. Thus saith the Lord unto Ezra, Tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem, which I would have given unto Israel. Their glory also will I take unto me. And give these the everlasting tabernacles which I have prepared for them. Oh. Then shall they then shall have the tree, they shall have the tree of life for an ointment of sweet savor. They shall neither labor nor be weary. So what's gonna happen? They're gonna the tree of life was they're gonna get this word again. They're gonna get this word back again. And that was a whole uh, one of the problems that Israel had with, with uh with Judah. One vexed the other, the other was jealous of the other one. Romans 11, the problem, the contention. That's why when you hold this, when you read Acts, the 10th chapter, this was the statement said at the end of it. Acts 10, verse uh, 44. Acts chapter 10, verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which had heard the word. And that was, those that fell was those that was with Cornelius. Read on. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. And they of the circumcision which believed, thus Judah, Benjamin, Levi, was astonished. Why? As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Because they realized, damn, they're getting the Holy Spirit. The Spirit has fallen upon them. They were astonished. Like, listen, we've been sacrificing to God. We've been serving God. We believe in God. 
And these guys, we went and talked to them. All of a sudden, now they got the Holy Spirit on them. That's why it says back in Romans. So I'm going to stop next verse, and I'm going to stop and end it for the day. I'll go back to 2nd Ezra chapter 2, verse 16. Second Ezra chapter 2 and verse 16. And those that be dead will I raise up from their places and bring them out of the graves, for I have known my name in Israel. So he says, and those that be dead, I'm going to raise out of their places. Where? In Corinth or wherever they were going to be scattered at. I'm going to raise them back up. And it's not because of sacrificing. It's not because they was looking for me. I'm going to raise back a, a people that's not even a people. Another nation, and they're going to provoke you to jealousy. So, we're going to stop here. Uh, Thursday, Lord Spare Life, I'll pick up and on chapter 2, and we'll continue reading. All right, so I pray that this class was edifying, that you receive. What you should do is go ahead and read the rest of 2, chapter 3, and uh, we'll see if we can get through all of it. And if it be the Lord's will on Thursday, I'll pick it back up, and uh, we'll continue on. All right, so... Uh, uh, you can visit us at www.israelunite.org uh, to pick up on the rest of the classes we have. We have classes every day. And for more information, uh, for those that are, are part of the body of uh, Israel United in Christ, Men's Conference is coming up in the month of August in Memphis, Tennessee. Get in contact uh, with your camp leaders and prospective uh, brothers that are, uh, I'm sorry, prospective brothers that are um, soldiers on up. It's, uh, it's a requirement. So it'll be good if you make it out there. Uh, with that, I want to say shalom. Most sign Christ bless. Most sign Christ bless. Hello, this is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.